This one is an example of one of the earliest hand pump pieces that we have in the museum here. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is a little bad today. This was an 1806 hand pumping engine. And this was built by a gentleman by the name of Pat Lyons in Philadelphia. Here's a picture of him at his blacksmith shop. Yeah. And he built a lot of the early fire engines for, for here in the, on the east coast mm -hmm. of the United States. Um, when, the, when, the, uh, when the cities were beginning to get big mm -hmm. and uh, we needed that fire protection. And as time went on, as you can see, the pieces got bigger yeah. and bigger. And uh, they even got more, more beautiful. They took great pride in the equipment. As you can see, they were all hand painted. Mm -hmm. Some were carved uh, in the wood and uh, were really quite elaborate mm -hmm. uh, for, for pieces that were to be put on the street to do an actual job. People would say, oh, well, that belongs maybe in a museum. But these were actually taken out and put on the streets. Excuse me. So when they weren't fighting fires, they may have been in a museum or such. Um, not, I'm sorry, not a museum, a parade or such like that. Uh, so the early fire engines were hand pumped, and here's an example of an early fire engine. Are you folks local to the area? Okay, so not too far. This specific piece here was from Lutherville, which is right in this area that we're in right here. So this was recovered and restored and brought here to the museum. Now this was a hand pulled, hand pumped fire engine. So the men actually pulled these through the streets and when they got to the fire, they would have to pump as we watch on this film. See how they're pumping? So similar to what I just um, touched on, you can see how the bigger buildings, they didn't come completely to the ground, but obviously they were devastated. You know, you can see right through these buildings and they were just a shell left over. And this was a major part of downtown Baltimore. If you know the area at all, Charles Street, which is a main road, Lombard Street over here, a main street, Pratt Street would have been down here by the Inner Harbor. Yeah. And look, imagine how much uh -huh. destruction yeah. it burned the whole downtown part of the city. And here are some artifacts that were recovered after the Great Fire and some additional pictures. Um, and it was really a quite, quite a devastating fire. Yeah, these are just various examples of fire alarm boxes. Now, this this shows you kind of the progression in terms of, uh, uh, certainly in terms of the, the casing here. Uh, so this is the oldest alarm box we have in the museum. This is from 1870. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll notice it has, what's that? The lid? Is that the lid? It has a keyhole. Oh, keyhole. Yeah, for a key. Oh. So that means that you need a key in order to open oh, this box. Wow. The box is kept locked at all times. Oh. Now, while we do have the key, Hang in here. Uh -huh. In reality, uh, back in 1870, when this would have been on the street corner, yeah. the key would not have been at the box. Right. So the people who had keys uh -huh. were the people that society deemed trustworthy and responsible. So mm -hmm. maybe a police officer, a neighborhood constable who was walking the beat, he'd have a key. Mm -hmm. Maybe a shopkeeper who mm -hmm. kept shop immediately adjacent yeah. to the box, they'd have a key. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to find someone with a key mm -hmm. uh, if your house was on fire, you know, so they could yeah. open up the box and call it in for you. Right. Uh, now, if you can't find someone in time, <laughs> That's a You're problem, too. right? You're out of luck. <laughs> so they eventually, uh, they developed a box mm. like this, 3472. Now you might want to cover your ears for this one. Oh, he this is going to get a little little loud. Uh -huh. So this is, this is the noise. Uh, wow. so you're, making, you're making 
making all that noise in the, in the process of trying to open this box. Now, if you think about a fire, you know, fire is a time of stress for all parties involved. So yeah. if your house is burning, you run down the street to the box, you might not necessarily be mm -hmm. in the frame of mind to yeah. be reading instructions, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you might crank that, hear the bells and think, okay, great, I called it mm -hmm. in. When re in reality, it says, turn handle to right until door opens, then pull inside hook once only, shut the door. So if you're not in that frame of mind to be, oh you know, gosh, to be reading weird. those instructions mm -hmm. uh -huh. and you hear those bells, you might think, oh, great, call the fire. <laughs> yeah. In reality, you haven't opened the door yet. Oh, right? yeah. The reason the bells are there is to kind of deter uh, pranksters and whatnot from, oh, from yeah. opening it up. Because when those bells sound, everyone on the street is going to be looking at you, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Would you like me to actually open it? Or is it? Is, or was yeah, that sure, felt yeah. too much? Okay, you want to cover your ears again. <laughs> this, this is how. This is how. <laughs> oh yeah. So that's that's what it takes oh, just to open the box, right? Oh, and then you yeah. would of course pull it on the inside. Uh,